Alors, bonjour tout le monde. Voilà, nous voilà maintenant arrivés à, à ce webinaire. Um, veuillez noter Good que ce webinaire... Bonjour à tous, bienvenue à notre webinaire. Please note, it will be simultaneously translated. So I would like to speak just once uh, to our English speaking friends so they can understand the simultaneous translation feature on Zoom. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this whole webinar will be in French, but simultaneously translated into English. To activate the functionality on your computer, you need to click on the glob shaped icon and then click on language of your choice. Of course, which should be English. For those who have a smartphone or a tablet, you must first click on more, then on language interpretation and then on the language of your choice. So thank you very much everyone for being with us today. And uh, please note that those who are joining by phone only, will, you will not be able to activate the interpretation functionality. Thank you and have a great webinar. Alors, uh, comme, uh, comme so as you heard about uh, the way the webinar is uh, going to run, all participants must activate the French interpretation channel by pressing the gl uh, globe icon and selecting the French language. So, and also, as I said, if you have a smartphone or tablet, please first press more and then choose language interpretation French. Uh, hello, and uh, if you need any assistance during this meeting, do not hesitate to communicate with uh, Ms. Naomi Mann on the chat, and you can find the chat uh, button at the bottom of the screen. So, hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Dominique Monchamp, and I am the senior advisor I'm for the Fondation uh, Gaspé Baudien and for Aquaforum. I'm your MC this morning. This webinar is organized by the, the Gaspé Baudien Foundation and by Aquaforum. Today, we uh, divided our event into there's a webinar this morning that will deal with the Canada, Canada Water Agency in the province of Quebec. And this is a going to underline the role for this new agency. We are also going to try to discover what your opinions are in, the, in Quebec and internationally on setting up this uh, new initiative. This afternoon, we will talk about the agency's role in terms of raising awareness among Canadians. So for these webinars, whether it's this morning or this afternoon, we first of all would like to inform you about the implementation of the Canada Water Agency, but mostly to hear your recommendations uh, and comments that you will raise today. So let's get back to this morning's webinar. Concerning your questions, well, we have around 200 participants joining us this morning. So following each panelist's statements, I will moderate a question period. And I encourage you to ask your questions in the Q&A function on your Zoom uh, platform that you find at the bottom of the screen, Q&A. I will summarize the questions and, and group them together into the relevant topics, and I will ask them to the speakers. Um, please note that if you have any pr technical problems, don't hesitate to contact Naomi Man on the Zoom chat. It's important for you to know that we will take note of all your questions, even if we don't ask the question specifically, but we will answer them all uh, in the report. 
uh, in our, uh, of the highlights that we will publish, but we might not be able to ask them live during the webinar. So I have asked the present presenters to get ready. And so without further ado, let me introduce our first panelist, Mr. Francis Scarpaleggia, who is Member of Parliament for Lac saint louis Since 2011, he's been Chair of the National Liberal Caucus. He currently sits on the House of Commons Environment Committee. Mr. Scaparleja has made the protection of Canada's fresh water one of his personal priorities. He will speak today about his government's commitment to the creation of the Canada Water Agency. So Mr. Scarpaleggia, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. I believe that technically everything is uh, in place now. So first of all, I would like to thank the foundation for having invited me here this morning to speak about my very favorite subject with you here in Canada. Over the years, I've noticed while working in the field of water that the community of stakeholders and uh, interested parties in Canada is uh, very dynamic and there are many participants and it is a very uh, topical subject in our environmental history today with the climate change and everything that is happening with the environment. So to better position or situate our Canada Water Agency, I think we need to give some context. This agency Re represents really the uh, outcome of many discussions that took place in the government, among the legislators and among the stakeholders in the field of water and the public, and has been being defined over the years and even started with the first free trade agreement in the 80s between Canada and the United States. At the time when we were negotiating that free trade agreement, that historical uh, trade agreement, many Canadians uh, were uh, con concerned by the uh, idea that at some point we may need to export some of our water to our uh, neighbor to the south and uh, who has a, a seemingly insatiable need for it. So, in fact, in the 1950s, that uh, idea came up in terms of the engineering that would be required to be able to send the water south. So, there was a, a project called the Grand Canal that was aimed at sending water from the great Canadian North to the United States. So there were people dreaming of a social project that would be really uh, timely and very modern for, the, for those days. So in the 1980s, we could remember that Ber Robert Barassa, who was prime minister or premier of Quebec in, uh, and elected in 1970, planned to uh, have hydroelectric power uh, become a very important uh, item in Quebec and uh, a sub uh, category was to send also to send water and it was part of his campaign to uh, take the reins of this uh, project in 1985. In the meantime, governments adopted policies to uh, shut down that idea in the embryonic stage. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because beside this very sensational uh, and easy to imagine uh, project, water is something that's hard to communicate about in a simple, consumable political uh, language. And it makes it hard to package water and to sell it as an issue. In fact, 
it, there, it is a very complex issue. It's, first of all, a scientific, scientific issue that goes beyond recycling or uh, conservation. Second, there's a huge complexity in terms of the jurisdictions that overlap in the field. For example, water is uh, the domain of the provinces and of the municipalities. They manage their water on a daily basis through the water treatment uh, facilities and uh, uh, drinking water filtration and so on. Water also is part of the uh, system for managing watersheds. And it's also comes under uh, heading in the United Nations that uh, deals with international rights and law and human right to water. So even while water is a provincial jurisdiction, properly speaking, the federal government also has 20 ministries who have part of their responsibilities dealing with this resource in one way or another. I'll give you an uh, example, Environment Canada. Oceans and Fisheries, Health Canada, uh, who that must recommend, uh, you know, standards for drinking water, uh, Transport Canada, responsible for navigation waters, uh, natural resources, responsible for analyzing underground water reserves services to native peoples uh, obviously there's also a, a an issue in terms of drinking water in reserve and uh, many other um, areas uh, we had a an announce uh, with M M minister mckinnell about huge uh, amounts to be invested to put drinking water infrastructure in place in Montreal. So there's the issue of human rights on the international level as well, uh, uh, the right to water. And also Canada is very involved in developing projects in emerging uh, countries and helping them to develop their access to drinking water. There's another ministry that's uh, uh, involved in supporting uh, water issues and throughout their industrial uh, policies, Industry Canada. So also public services. They plan to Drink, uh, uh, build a drinking water reserve of, in the native territories and they are in charge of looking over the bids for that project so there are so many levers to handle that it's very difficult to put it all into one package in terms of taxation for example sometimes you can solve a problem using uh, just a, a tax credit or subsidy or something. Well, the governments can do certain things to try to deal with one or another aspect of water, but there is nowhere where we can um, protect our safety, our water security. So the question is open there are too many and uh, stakeholders needed too many people are working individually on the scientific side on developing technologies on producing and offering uh, products and services including engineering services managing waterways cleaning uh, uh, waterways and and so forth so there are so many stakeholders that we can't even know them all we cannot assemble them all under one umbrella. All these stakeholders have uh, the responsibility for ensuring our water security uh, here in Canada and also uh, in other countries. So there is an invisible hand that is 
if there was an invisible hand guiding everything like in the free market, governments can uh, provide a structure for the management uh, of these things, but these are very complex tasks. They uh, involve a sharing uh, tasks, sharing knowledge and, and sharing technologies. So often we talk about strategies, national water strategies. And even in the recent uh, throne speech, they mentioned, and we have to clarify this idea so that we come up with a practical national water strategy. It is impossible to include all the elements that we need to deal with under one strategy to uh, ensure our water security. It is far too vast a and varied a field. Water is a field where you need to take small sips at a time. You can't drink a gallon in a gulp. There are many elements that, as I said, don't come under the same jurisdiction. So in my opinion, the Canada Water agency should help us gain better collaboration. The purpose of the agency is to be an organization and bureaucratic uh, offer uh, office that is to uh, put some order in the field and to help uh, each of the various uh, stakeholders speak together they could uh, help reconfigure the issue into a an agency that will really help support people working on water in their various fields of responsibility under a federal water policy and the agency could be used as a drop-off point or a hub, let's say, where the various other jurisdictions and, and, and the range of stakeholders and researchers and uh, people developing uh, products and systems could work together. This agency cannot be built in a day. It cannot be managed in one single day. The agency must be the cornerstone. It must be the starting point, and it must take form gradually. What we're talking about here is a bureaucratic reform on the federal level, a kind of a reorganization of, of, of a part of the federal machine. This is a difficult process that has to be done carefully. There's always the risk of resistance, resistance, even within the bureaucracy itself. But that being said, this is certainly the right time. Because when you talk about climate change, you necessarily have to talk about water. Water is where we are most, uh, the weakest in terms of environment change, climate change. The greenhouse effect is invisible, but the climate change most concretely manifests in its impacts on our waterways in terms of uh, droughts, in terms of floods, uh, inundations that we have had here in my region that I represent in the last couple, two, three years. The agency will help all levels of government and all stakeholders to deal with the impacts of climate change on our most precious resource. The idea of an agency to deal with water issues is really important in our current uh, situation. As I mentioned, it will need to take form gradually. I know that the federal government is now consulting with the stakeholders. And uh, unfortunately, we've had to 
slow down the process due to the pandemic. But what is promising is that the government in the throne speech referred to this objective, which is to create the Canada Water Agency. So the idea is well in place. Now, yes, we've had to slow down because of the pandemic, but the government is committed and said so in the throne speech that they're committed to this project. So that's more or less how I see things with respect to the agency and with respect to this very, very important uh, project, which is to maintain fresh water in Canada and in the rest of the world. And personally, I want water to become another pillar of our foreign policy. I believe that Canada is a nation where water is front and center to our identity, to our national countries. And I think we should really make water a priority on our in, in our international uh, dealings and policy. So thank you for your attention. And I uh, eagerly await your questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Scarpaleggia. I think we now know more about the context regarding the creation of the Canada Water Agency. So this sets the table for our next speakers. I will now uh, ask you to turn off your camera, Mr. Scarpeggia, and we will mm, turn the floor over to Mr. Jean Saint mars I would like to introduce Mr. Jean Saint mars who is co-chair of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Collaborative. He was Quebec's commissioner of St sustainable development from 2009 to 2016. He has conducted numerous audits on a wide variety of environmental issues. He is currently an international consultant in environment, sustainable development, and performance auditing. He will talk about the importance of uh, innovative water governance in 2020. Thank you. Mr. Sankmars, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madame Monchamp. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, Fondation de Gaspé Beauvien for uh, inviting us he here. And uh, I believe, and thank you, Mr. Scarpetti, you make a wonderful presentation on the context surrounding the, the governance and the creation of the Canada Water Agencies. So also what I found very interesting was that uh, we definitely have a strong interest in setting up new governance for water that corresponds to the needs of uh, the 21st century. And I'd like to present to you the results of a survey I conducted, a consultation that took 18 months, but really took two years. And the objective was to identify measures to be able to propose a, a modern Canada water agency for, for the Great Lakes in Saint Laurent and for uh, the uh, Quebec and Ontario. So what is the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Collaborative? The most important word here is collaborative. So here you see some photographs of people who were very active in the field. These people were very involved in creating solutions uh, for the uh, Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence. Also a panel of experts talking about the various hypotheses possible to come up with recommendations that would be relevant. And so this was an 18 month consultation, as I said, and through that consultation, we came up with 30 recommendations, 27 
about uh, in, in the uh, Great Lakes and St. Lawrence, more test technical aspects, and then three reports, including three on governments. So I'd like to draw your attention to the text on the right when it says 70 online meeting, 220 online participants, five webinars, and 225 attendees in person who attended two summits. So there was a lot of uh, participation. And I was really astonished to see the generous uh, contribution of the experts who came to us uh, from Unquickly, Ontario to help further uh, this debate. Now, what are the main themes? First of all, climate change. Uh, this is probably the most important thing concerning water today, as Mr. Scarpelleggi has said. Uh, we, the, the mitigation aspect is something completely different, but we have to talk about the ecosystems that are affected and in, uh, by floods, by uh, drought, and we need to talk about the, these effects of climate change. Now, the second theme is, are, are the beaches and bacteriological contamination? Uh, the health of water is very important for Canadians. And when you have contaminations that cause closures of beaches, these have huge impacts socially and economically. So this is a very essential point as well that we pay a lot of attention to. And the climate is a very concerning issue. In the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence, we see uh, zones where there are oxygen def deficits affecting the flora of uh, the area. Now, the, also the toxic uh, materials that are found in water. We have more and more problems with contamination so that in the 80s and 90s, we put water um, technology in place that uh, we're able to deal with the old contaminants, but they are no longer able to deal with the new contaminants that we have. So we need to put new systems in place to make sure that the contaminants and toxic substances uh, be removed from the water. So these are very important considerations as well. Now the 30 innovative recommendations, well, we did a report on the Great Lakes. Uh, uh, that was produced in uh, May and June to 2020. There are 27 recommendations uh, that touch on each of the themes I just mentioned. Then we did a third report dedicated to governance, because we all recognize that we can have excellent recommendations, even a wonder implementation of those recommendations. But if governance is not in place, if it is not appropriate, the efforts will uh, not uh, come to fruition and investments will not come to fruition. So we produced three major recommendations for innovative governance uh, to, uh, to have an approach that is cohesive and provides access to a widely dispersed uh, expertise. Contrary to what we had in the 90s, where the expertise was at the government level. Today, we have expertise in research centers and universities and departments and municipalities, and we even have financial research centers. So this expertise needs to be able to work together to create innovative solutions and do so as quickly as possible. Now, the recommendation on governance. Well, first of all, we recommended that the government of Canada, in collaboration with the governments of Quebec and Ontario, establish the institutional arrangements described in this report. That's the first recommendation. And we did recommendations for in terms of governance. And the key recommendations is that the 
two levels of government work together to establish the most precise areas where the recommendations would be uh, put in place. Now, if we look at the um, institutional arrangements, first of all, we suggested that a interministerial inter working group be formed so that uh, people could work together. Mr. Scarpelletti had mentioned that there is some 20 ministers involved. If you add the provincial ones, if you add uh, non-governmental organizations initiatives, there's an impressive number of stakeholders involved. So often, as Mr. Scarpelletti said, we have to clean this up a bit and, and organize it in order to have a framework, a governance framework uh, to make it work. So we took the um, working group's recommendation uh, and, and, and uh, to create a commission for the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence. <laughs> and uh, the idea is to coordinate and to have the support of a secretariat. So what we did was in the objectives and in the measures that were created, then um, we were able to verify the implementation and um, we also suggested the implementation of an organization for the First Nations for Great Lakes and St. Lawrence so that they could bring their knowledge into the fold. On the relevance of the measures that would be put into place. So if we look a little lower, we suggested with the teams to take care of these things for climate change. We suggested teams for the implementation for algae, same thing with bacteriological contamination for the beaches, and exposure to toxic substances. So the experts, the expertise centers will work with researchers and experts will come from different organizations to make sure that we can have access to the maximum amount of expertise available at home here. The recommendation now around funding for the Great Lakes, Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence, we asked the federal government to make available $2.2 billion over 10 years. So that's $220 million per year. So if we look, if we look at how the budget would be break be broken down. $875 million for climate change, $593 million for beaches and bacteriological contamination, $400 million for nutrition, and $261 million for toxic substances and contaminants of emerging interest. Now, you know, like I do, that funding is essential if we want to implement this and be efficient in achieving these goals. So that's what we've evaluated in terms of costs. And that's the funding recommendation that we have communicated to the federal government. Now, what I'm interested in, in the white paper on the Canada Water Agency is that first, we learned that there were there has been uh, discussions on this by the federal government for years to implement a new governance for water. What we've done at the collaborative, well, we tackled specific questions and we wanted to come up with recommendations around governance. Now there's a link of course, between the collaborative's initiatives and the initiative to put in place a management framework for managing water at the federal level. So I think that we have made progress and maybe this was independent of the Canada Water Agency, but we have uh, gone through a reflection exercise and it's very consistent with the objective that was presented this morning. So these are two initiatives that I already said that are that fit nicely together, just like two pieces of Lego. A lot of work was done on this. 
and it shows that we could very quickly put these measures in place. And this would support the federal government's initiative to put in place a Canada Water Agency. So this concludes my presentation this morning. Of course, I will be available to answer questions during the question and answer period. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Mr. saint -Mars. That was very interesting. I'll remind everyone that you can ask your questions in the Q&A section whenever you're ready. If you've got questions for Mr. saint -Mars or for Mr. Scarpalegia, you can ask them in the Q&A and during the Q&A period, I will try to answer as many as possible. Now, we'd like to introduce Mr. Pierre-Yves Coe, who is Director of Science and Engineering for the Canadian Section of the International Joint Commission, IJC. M Mr. Coe leads a group of water resources scientists at the International Joint Commission, and he's also the Director of Science and Engineering for the Canadian Section. Today, he will be sharing the IJC's recommendations to the Canada Water Agency. So, Mr. Ko, over to you now. Hello, yes, thank you. I'm trying to get control over the screen, but I don't see the little arrow at the moment. Do I have the control? Stephanie, Stephanie, do I have the control of my screen? Pardon me. Or in this case, could you please change my slides for me? Stephanie, can you hear us? Oh, okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Ms. Monchamp, for that introduction. I'd also like to thank the De Gaspé uh, Beaubien Foundation for inviting me to this panel today. Next slide, please. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of who the IJC is. I'm going to talk about the challenges that we've got and the approach that we use for conflict resolution between our two countries where transboundary waters are concerned. And I'll give you some real examples. Next slide, please. So we are an independent organization. When the United States and Canada ask us for advice regarding uh, transboundary waters, we are not uh, subjective. We have equal partners at the commission. So we've got two main legislative documents. There's the 1909 treaty and the agreement on the quality of water of the great lakes from 1972. Next slide, please. We have two main responsibilities. One is regulation. So throughout our rulings, we regulate the levels of water in certain uh, watersheds. And we also investigate uh, cross-border problems. So sometimes these are uh, referrals, if you will. We do this according to fundamental principles. For conflict resolution, well, what we want is we're after the common interest of both parties. So there's a factual study done, and that's essential. And we do that in order to find that common interest and the role of the commission in, uh, and my role in terms of director of science and engineering is to make sure that there's scientific data and institutional excellence. Next slide, please. So we have 13 jurisdictions in Canada and there are different understandings and priorities and approaches that are used and measures when it comes to water management resources. In our transboundary waters, that affects several jurisdictions, it's hard to find solutions. We're not all on the same page. And as it was mentioned with climate change, this problem has only been exacerbated. 
We also expect that forecasts for droughts and floods and the resilience of communities, uh, we expect that that could be improved. Next slide, please. I'll very briefly give you seven examples for our discussions. Collaboration, first of all, streamlining of data and sharing information, common tools, a little bit about indigenous peoples, adapted management, forecasts, and innovation. Next slide, please. Collaboration. In Canada, we have a top-down approach. And the IJC uh, is for a top-down and bottom-up approach. There's an ecosystemic approach. So we use the knowledge, the tools, and the advice, and the ways of doing things, both from locally and regionally. We use all of that. Next slide. Streamlining and sharing information. If common sharing of information is essential for geospatial information and hydrological information for the US and Canada, well, all of that info uh, was not uh, aligned. So there were different lines and boundary lines for Canada and the US. So vertically or horizontally, uh, these lines did not match up. So you could understand why it'd be difficult to make decisions when science when science in this case was not appropriate. The agency could play this role in harmonizing and streamlining information. Next slide, please. Developing common tools. With climate change, everything has become more complicated. And we're noticing that we can't do everything alone. Nobody has all the means or all the experts needed to do so. As an example, we could look at the uh, damaging uh, or invasive uh, seaweed as an example. This could be something that the agency could take care of. Next slide, please. A partnership with Indigenous peoples and integrating their knowledge. This is a priority for the IJC. We have a number of councils and we have uh, Indigenous members on them and we try to continually recruit them on our other councils, they are our partners. We have a number of joint projects with them. The agents could become an empowering body to ensure a good partnership that includes Indigenous peoples. You'll see on the right, that's the watershed of Lake Champlain and the Richelieu River. We can see that 200 meters from the shore, at two hundred meters from the shore, you've got indigenous peoples and they've been there for a very, very long time and always shared those with us. Next slide, please. Adaptive management now. There have been a lot of strategies around climate change, but very, very few operational frameworks. So what that means is that how and when do you act faced with in uncertainty? For many of our mandates with water management, we have developed a, an operational framework that follows up on vulnerabilities caused by climate change. And we have connected that to the decision-making process. The agents could support this type of framework in the long term. Next slide, please. Forecasts. Climate change means that we're having extreme weather events. So we're seeing more droughts and more floods. A Better collaboration on hydrological and weather forecasts would be ideal. The agency could focus on such collaboration. Next slide, please. Lino uh, innovation now. In a number of our committees, we use an, an integrated approach and it establishes the environmental and social impacts related to changes around water. So it was developed by Environment Canada in partnership with the IJC and a number of other parties. This approach is very innovative. It's the only one in North America. We did our research. 
the agents could help in disseminating such approaches, which would be used by a community of practice that is much broader. And it could be therefore maintained that way. Next slide. In conclusion, the agency should be a catalyst and a coordinator. We heard about fisheries, environment, natural resources, agriculture, agri-food, Health Canada, Transport Canada. Those are a few of the big ones. The agency should focus on conflict resolution by removing obstacles. By doing so, the agency should develop tools and national approaches that the jurisdictions could use to better manage their water resources. That ends my presentation. And the panelists haven't been consulted, but I think we all agree with how to proceed. There are some things that we all agree on. And what I've done now is I have reinforced the points highlighted by Mr. Scarpaleggia and Mr. Saint mars Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ko. That was a very interesting. We're now going to introduce our last panelist before the Q&A period. This is Christian Percha, a lawyer by training. Ms. Percha has extensive leadership experience. She was one of the youngest women elected to the Quebec National Assembly. She has also served as president of the Quebec Council on the Status of Women, as Quebec's delegate general in Mexico City, and as a consultant on women's rights in Haiti and West Africa. Since 2019, she has been president and CEO of Réseau Environnement, the largest group of environmental specialists in Quebec. And she will discuss with us today the importance of talking about water. Christiane, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dominique. And I thank the, the Gaspé Beaubien Foundation for bringing us all together here today. First of all, well, my biography mentioned that I'm a lawyer by training. Yes, that was my training and it's been my role. Well, in all the roles I've had, That's always been part of it. But I must add that I was also the parliamentary assistant for the environment when I was very young. So from 1989 to 1994, I was in politics. So I'm very familiar with these portfolios. At Réseau Environnement, we adopted a new vision about a year ago. And the idea of this new vision is to become the catalyst of the green economy. And as you know, the green economy means good governance. It means a low carbon economy, but it also means equity among citizens or equality. And so my experience in equality uh, is always useful to me every day. Now, we are a network that has been around for over 60 years. For those of you who know it well, well, you know that it started as the Quebec Association of Water, and the idea was to promote water and protecting that rich resource, and then it was merged with another organization, and then it eventually became Réseau Environnement, Environmental Network. Now, we are clearly very concerned by all issues affecting water. We held an event in March, just a little bit before the pandemic. We brought together uh, members from the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Collaborative, and the idea was to come up with recommendations with these organizations. Réseau Environnement is proud to associate with the Canada Water Agency. 
and to be part of putting it together. Perhaps this is the elephant in the room, but despite uh, the opposition from the government of Quebec, I don't want to go against my own government or members of provincial parliament, not at all. However, it does seem that water has no borders and the discussion on water and protecting it and all matters affecting water resources in Canada, while those can't be limited to one place or one company. And we've seen this many times over. Uh, Mr. Scarpaleggia, who I'd like to acknowledge, and he's my one of my husband's colleagues, he said that water is a provincial responsibility and its management is also a provincial responsibility and the government of Quebec is doing that while in a way that's not always as great as we'd like but it is fulfilling its uh, responsibility. In 2009 the government of Quebec adopted a, a, a water act and it's considered part of Quebec's heritage and the government of Quebec adopted just recently a new strategy for a Quebec water strategy for better water management and Réseau Environnement is part of that improved water management. I think that there is a way in any case for a group like ours to participate in the creation of this agency. This would be a federal agency and a central body. But we Quebec's point of view to it and this vision of water as part of our heritage. And of course, we agree with the objective of the importance of talking about water in a broader way. That is to say, beyond just our borders and our province. Mr. Saint Mars gave a great presentation. Mr. Scarpaleggia as well and Mr. Co as well. And of course, water does not have borders. So questions or matters of water. Mr. Saint Mars mentioned many things and these are themes that are fundamental. Now, internationally, we have to address the lack of water in some countries and the poor management of drinking water and of fresh water in some countries. This is going to come back to the UN and Canada and maybe even Quebec will have something to say about that. And so once again, water, this issue does not have borders. And so all of this is happening with much transparency. Now, the federal government wishes to put together the Canada Water Agency. When we talk about collaborative federalism, well, that is a concept that I really like. I hope that that will be the case when putting together this agency. Perhaps it could be more collaborative than what we've seen in past discussions around health expenses, for example. It's always unfortunate to take sides in politics when this type of subject is addressed. And I hope water will not become one of these politicized topics that is subject to politicking. So there you go. That's it for my role as a former uh, politician. So ensuring the safety, cleanliness and good management of water, that's an essential objective for us. There are studies in the US that show that the poor, man, the poor quality of water or problems related to water in the US could have an impact affecting up to 2% of their GDP. So we can see that this problem of poor water management 
can have significant impacts on the economy. And we have tabled a green plan very recently, and we demonstrated that investments made in water would be just as profitable as uh, investments made in infrastructure, roads or buildings, schools, if we want to talk about a return on investment. When the government wishes to uh, reboot the economy, they often do it by building roads and other infrastructure. At least that's what um, Bill 66 proposes. But we won't want to invest in our water infrastructure. We, the return on investment would be just as big, if not bigger, than $1.44. compared to investments that aren't necessarily green investments. We think that investing in water is green inviting, green investing, and we're talking $17 billion in investment in water infrastructure. So ensuring the safety, cleanliness, and good management of water, that's a priority at Réseau Environnement. And we promote those objectives every day. And we also wish to reinforce resilience to climate change. This is an objective that is critical for us. And we have already kept up with the collaborative and we have a work commit, working committee chaired by Jean Paquet, and you know he participated in the collaborative as well. And Jacques Paquet directs that committee, and the objective essentially is to suggest new measures to the government, even new public policies. The idea is to strengthen our role and have better infrastructure. There are other examples, broader visions that go beyond borders. There's the Great L Lakes and St. Lawrence initiative, the IJC, and we are another one as well. This is something that affects both countries. Of course, there's the International Commission on Water, and if I'm not mistaken, in any case, when there was the free trade agreement, NAFTA, even though it no longer has that name, there were also discussions with Mexico and the U.S. on water. So we talked about challenges, climate change, natural catastrophes related to water, and piecemeal governance for water. Now, something that comes up time and time again in these challenges is the health of citizens and the cleanliness of our water. This is an underlying objective that is very dear to us. So we agree with the role of the Canada Water Agency to marshal all of the knowledge to deal with water-related problems strengthen management of transboundary rivers. I already talked to you about our Water Cleanup Committee 2.0. There's an issue of exposure to contaminants that's become a public health issue. There was a, a media coverage on this and even a, a report. Somebody said that there are some contaminants in the environment and in our water, and we understand that our exposure to new contaminants is becoming a public health issue, a huge one. So we're talking $400 billion per year lost in productivity 
and health costs in the US. So that is also an economic issue, as I was saying. So our objective is to help our governments understand how to modernize insulation, reduce uh, the problem, something that I would say that we don't talk enough about and our on our 2.0 committee we have a representative from a number of uh, producers to help us with that so in summary if the agency meets the objective to ensure water security and promote uh, thinking process about the watersheds and transmit a, a durable uh, sustainable her heritage um, about water that will meet the objectives so thank you very much and i'm ready to answer questions as the case may be well thank you very much christian that was a great uh, uh, presentation so now i'd like to uh, ask all panelists to turn on their cameras and their microphones this is now the question period i'd like to uh, warned the panelists, we've received a lot of uh, questions, and most of them are for Mr. Carpaleggia because everyone is very interested and they all want to know what's going to happen with the Canada Water Agency, uh, what it's going to do, what the jurisdictions will be. So the way I'm going to uh, proceed is that, of course, the Canada Water Agency is not implemented yet this is our chance to make res recommendations and give comments knowing that the uh, this webinar the extracts will be sent to, to the elected officials uh, and people in charge of looking after the canada water agency so i'm going to ask uh, also all our panelists to give their opinions on the questions that i'm going to ask and this will help to you know strengthen your recommendations so let's start with the first question a lot of people ask the question about the role of provinces with respect to the agency and i know there are a lot of uh, jurisdictions uh, uh, provincially as well so what are the federal government's intentions in terms of uh, um, the dialogue with the provinces and i'll ask mr scarpalagia to start with that and then i'll ask uh, the other panelists what your positions are with respect to this question so mr scarpalagia yes thank you thank you for that question first of all and on my own personal behalf i'd like to speak because I'm not the person in charge of the policies at the uh, uh, House of Commons. I'm not in charge of this uh, file. I do work with the person who is. But anyway, in uh, my opinion, in terms of the role of the provinces, well, for the time being, their role is going to be to answer the phone. Uh, the gov federal government is going to have to consult the, the provinces thoroughly for their point of view. So the purpose, I, I believe, is to try to uh, clean things up on the federal level. And this agency is going to need to create its own priorities. And to do that, it's going to have to know what the stakeholders uh, positions are including the provinces and the municipalities so these uh, stakeholders will be asked to uh, communicate their priorities and whether they have any kind of action plan a support plan a technical plan or what uh, have you so the agency will want to consolidate things on the federal level. That's my opinion. Okay, Mr. St. Mars, do you have anything to say on the federal jurisdiction in terms of this agency and how it can deal with the provinces? Well, yes, of course. Um, like Mr. Scarpalegula said, that there is some uh, cleanup, administrative cleanup that has to be done 
on the federal level, but I think that Canadians are expecting to receive practical solutions. You know, we can always uh, clear up the governance, but there are concrete problems in terms of climate change, etc. And Canadians want solutions. So we look in the past, what has really worked? And I, there was the action plan for the Great uh, Lakes and the St. Lawrence and St. Fraser. So these programs uh, uh, are, are those that brought the financing to support the initiatives to clean up toxicities and so forth. So these programs had a lot of success. The action plan for the St. Lawrence was very successful in terms of reducing industrial contamination and toxicity. So I'm surprised not to see other models that could resemble those models that were so successful in the past. So in the uh, like uh, in the in the St. Lawrence Collaborative, we proposed a more modern model, something different that was done in the, than what was done in the 1990s. But there was very active participation by the federal and provincial governments, and then a lot of financing from the federal government. Because when you look at initiatives dealing with water, if it's to finance a drinking water uh, or water uh, treatment plant, the federal uh, involvement is very important. And I think we need to set in place much more modern solutions in continuity with what has been being done. Thank you very much, Jean. Mr. Cole, what is your position on the uh, Canada Water Agency and the provinces? Uh, um, I know that you are very interested in uh, international rela relationships. What about the provinces? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I was talking about uh, participating on practical committees on, for example, climate change. We said it was very complex. It's very multidisciplinary. And each of the provinces don't have individually all of the resources to deal with it. So we have to establish practical uh, committees throughout uh, the country. So resilience is something uh, Im important. The Quebec government uh, opened its uh, files to examine what can we do better. So we are open. We cannot do everything uh, on our own. I would take the example Champagne Lake, uh, Richelieu River. There's a third theme on that, and it is for first respondents. How do you prepare, for example, for floods, uh, for first responders? So there are a lot of new ways of uh, dealing with the floods, including the study on insurance. How? Does the United States handle it in terms of insurance, for example? I mean, it's a detail, but how can we better use our systems, our insurance uh, systems uh, in, in this case? To support what Mr. St. Mars was saying, the optimal management that was done by Agriculture Canada to manage uh, farm practices. Well, in Quebec, we're talking about doing that. We have some funds put aside for that, but there are a lot of different uh, um, types of projects like that, and there are a lot of different things that we can do throughout the country and uh, support those projects that will be of a benefit to all of us. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Madam Pelsha, I know uh, we uh, heard your position, but I just thought you might want to add a few words. Well, I think that this is an opportunity that we should really take from the uh, Canadian government. We can't miss this opportunity. Even though we do have our skills in Quebec, it's a, a good time to take a leadership role, especially in terms of the St. Lawrence and the Great Lakes uh, that uh, cross uh, country uh, lines. So 
also, like the others said, to, to clean up things in terms of the administration on the federal level, because the, the laws have not been reviewed uh, in many, many years, and I think it would be a good time to do that. And also, all the people around the table, not only the speakers, but the people who are participating, it's, uh, it would be nice for them to have some leadership uh, from the federal government. And I'll just give you an example of what Mr. St. Mars is uh, talking about the $2 billion per year, I'm sorry, over 10 years to invest in the recommendations in the collaborative. That's not a lot in 10 years, two and a half billion dollars in 10 years. So there are some solutions that could be put forward and we wouldn't have to wait too long to see something concrete come out of that. Now, will this, uh, I mean, the recommendation, uh, the recommendations of the collaborative could be made part of the Canada agency. But for us, what our members are often saying is, oh, no, let's not have another committee, another this, another that, not another agency, but another, you know, think tank and so on. The people want to see something concrete, especially in terms of the impacts of climate change on water and the impacts of water on climate change. So there, I think there's something that uh, it's an uh, opportunity that we really need to take up very quickly from the federal government. Thank you very much, Christian. And now another question on the subject of uh, native communities. So, uh, should we, we, the, the question is about integrating the point of view of uh, um, Native communities uh, at every step of the way. How do you see the integration of uh, uh, Aboriginal organizations? Mr. Capegia, yes, I do agree with the idea of having federal leadership, but when we talk about, I mean, the way I see this agency is that it would be like having a role of a hub, of an advisory hub, because this budgetary decisions, for example, will remain in the hands of the hands of the departments in terms of uh, infrastructures, uh, communities, environment, and so on. But the agency would have the expertise to be able to advise those bodies regarding the investments that uh, we need. So this it would be for me it would be like a hub that would be responsible to integrate the points of views of all uh, points of view of all of the stakeholders and, and that includes uh, uh, native people and in the atlantic provinces now they are creating a body for managing water for the native communities in the Atlantic region. So they will build up an expertise on that. And uh, we will have very uh, tight uh, uh, or close uh, collaboration with uh, those bodies or that body for uh, discussion and dialogue that will help to inform the uh, ministry, for example, the native services. Uh, and so for me, it's a hub, and I hope. And it, it won't be a traditional agency that is completely independent of government priorities. I would like the government priorities to be able to be a, a part of the work of the agency, to, to influence the work of the agency, and that they should have the kind of leadership that Madame Pelsha and Mr. St. Mars are talking about. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. St. Mars, uh, in the work that you have done with the Great Lake St. Lawrence Collaborative, have you uh, addressed the position of the Native peoples in your governance? Yes, absolutely. In the terms of the consultations that we did on the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence, we always consulted the Native people. We have on our committee, even members uh, of those communities uh, that have communicated their uh, positions. 
and as Mr. Co said, and I'll give you an example on, on that, of, on Lake Champlain, the native people have lived there for millennia, so they have knowledge and they have an attachment to, that is cultural, that is emotional to that area. So we naturally ask them for their opinions and use their opinions, and we have a lot to learn from them. So it is undeniable that the participation of native peoples is very important. And if you want, you can refer to the graphic on the uh, institutions that we presented, we have a native representative to stand on the federal committees and other committees to help us in our governments. And it's really an essential aspect. Okay, Mr. Cole, in your uh, presentation, you were very clear on the presence of several native communities and reserves in in the, in the geography or the divisions between uh, Canada and the United States. So what is the, uh, rec what are the recommendations that you could make to the uh, Canada Water Agency in terms of integrating the native peoples in the governance? Yes, well, the commission, well, we have a trans-border uh, uh, communications. We have technical and scientific and engineering liaisons, uh, liaisons, and then also people in communication. So on those, uh, uh, let's say, advisory boards, we are promoting the participation of Native peoples. We want Native people on the boards. So twice a year, those boards report to the commission and discuss with the commissioners about the challenges and the issues. So the native people would have a continual in input and communication. That's important. Now, since they would be on the boards, they would participate in scientific programs and in projects as well. They have their own projects and projects in partnership with others, so and many things. So now we are developing a tool uh, to determine the vulnerability of their sites to floods, for example, in Lake Champlain. It's important to have that information available to the whole country, and the agency could play that role, for example, to let's say, disclose that kind of information. What is the vulnerability to floods of a certain region? And we also believe, like Mr. St. Mars said, the native people have a lot to contribute and they should be formally informed of our discussions. Thank you. Madam Pelshaw, do you have something to say? You have to unmute yourself. Here I am. Yes, in fact, I think if we want to be open and, and effective, we need to take into account the position of Native people that is fundamental. So the agency uh, in the document that was sent to us talks about a commitment to and, and from the Native people. This is fundamental. I would add that I would like to thank Mr. Skarpelidja for his uh, presentation and his openness to, to this. And I think that all the groups that are here are very open to supporting the uh, federal government's leadership on that. Okay, well, thank you. Now, we have 10 minutes left. Uh, there are dozens and dozens of questions, and I cannot ask all the questions, but I do want to assure you all that we will take note of all those questions, and they will all be part of the recommendation report. Now, there are several questions about financing at all sorts of levels. The financing of the infrastructures, uh, old infrastructures, the problem is not only in Quebec, but several provinces are dealing with aging infrastructure. 
there are several groups and nonprofit organizations working in the field, uh, doing their best to consult uh, the public and to raise awareness and do all that with very little in terms of funding. And so the questions are how would the Canada Water Agency either coordinate or help with financing either uh, water uh, stakeholders or um, help to, to, to those nonprofit or uh, and, uh, stakeholders or municipalities in terms of handling their water is there any kind of financing role of the agency and then uh, I'll ask you if you have recommendations about that. So first of all, Mr. Scarpaleggia, please. I believe that I did cover that uh, to an extent earlier when I said that I do not see the agency as being like a government department. It's not a ministry where it pays out financing for this or that project because those kind of things in my mind should remain within the various ministry that hold them now but the agents should agency should be able to provide expertise expertise so let's say there's a need in some field regarding water there's a need for some program and then that that need has not been met uh, through the uh, uh, stakeholders that deal with the agency so the agency could communicate with the ministries involved and give expertise provide uh, expertise uh, because it would ha while the government has some good knowledge about uh, aging infrastructures there are new ideas now and new uh, ideas could be funneled through the agency to then be uh, communicated to the various other ministries. Thank you. Mr. Sank Mars, do you have anything to say about finance initiative in the rest of the country? Well, for me, just a supplement to what Mr. Sicarpaggio just uh, said. If I look at my old role in sustainable development, when you have a performance tool in a ministry, what you're looking for is a plan based on a strategy, so an action plan. So I see that the agency would have that role to determine what the priorities are and what the technologies to be used are. If you look at the collaborative document, you see that we offered several initiatives based on new uh, technologies, data management, risk management, uh, managing uh, pollution, managing invasive species. There's a lot of technology. Now we see that uh, the agency could put some order into all those technologies and learn them with uh, and, and align them with the needs for new infrastructure so if the agency could identify what the problems are what the uh, infrastructure needs are and then be able to suggest the most appropriate tools to use i think we would have a very practical action plan that would enable us to get started very quickly well thank you very much mr cole do you have anything to add on financing some of these initiatives in terms of uh, water management. As an international organization, it's difficult to answer that question. However, in my career, I spend a lot of time in Environment Canada and among the uh, departments. And uh, I would say, therefore, that it depends on the uh, groups that are made, the different kinds of uh, discussions that will ha that will take place among the ministries and how it will all develop, it, what will be tr transmitted and so on. So it's difficult to say whether there would be money uh, available to transfer. But I would just take one point that Mr. Scarpaleggia said, is that 
if there's a, a need among any uh, ministry, for example, you go to the Treasury Board, you have a strategic plan, you do a, a, a proposal, the, there is then a decision made in the cabinet to provide financing. I mean, it would be, the, that's the way the federal government uh, uh, deals with uh, uh, solving problems and, and, and covering gaps. So a ministry ha can uh, deal with that. That's my opinion. And that's my experience of the government. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Christian. Well, I would say that in addition to what I already said on financing, uh, is that we have to take into account, uh, like you're doing, the consultation groups, like we do at Rezo Environnement. We have our um, communities of practice with uh, men and women who are working on the private side and on the power public side and on the government side. So, and especially with what's going on with COVID, our a community of practice was not able to support people working in uh, the water treatment plants in Quebec who are uh, members at, uh, at Réseau Environnement. And uh, anyway, this is a way of going from the bottom up, like to tie in expertise in the field with the decision makers. So anyway, that's what I had to say. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Christian. Well, unfortunately, our time is up already. We are ending this webinar in less than four minutes, uh, uh, which just gives me time to conclude quickly. So first of all, I would like to thank our panelists, all of you, thank you for the panelists and the um, participant. There in the part, your our panelists gave wonderful uh, presentations, and uh, there were more than 200 participants in this webinar. So this webinar would not have been possible without the support of Fondation de Gaspé Beaubien and the support of Aquaforum and the de Gas the Gaspé Beaubien family to be a significant member in water management in Quebec and for five years and they have created Aqua Forum and they ha are responsible for aqua hacking uh, to create technological solutions for water issues using the best Canadian talent. So the virtual event, event today is part of a series of webinars that are um, initiated by Global Water Future. You can go on the Global Water Future website and see all previous webinars with all the links and all the various subjects that they have talked about and all the various recommendations that have been made. Also, I would like to thank the Eco Gestion Solution firm that contributed to the logistics of this webinar and also a huge thank Thank you to the working team that uh, designed this webinar and its content. There's John Eric uh, Turcotte, uh, Strategy, uh, Saint Laurent, uh, Mr. Saint March from the Collaborative, Denise Cloutier from the Centre d'Interpretation de l'Aude, Antoine Berbeau, who is General uh, Manager of ROBBQ, Jean Martin, who is uh, from Technology Aspect from uh, uh, Sonexon, and uh, Stephanie Dallard. For, from Gestion de l'eau. Uh, so we're going to take all of your recommendations uh, that were written down, all of your questions, all your recommendations uh, by the panelists and so forth. We are going to produce a document. We are going to send it out to, to all the elected officials and bureaucrats concerned. Now, anyone who would like to send uh, uh, something in either individually or as an organization, you can put your recommendation in view on the Place Speak uh, platform that's uh, set up by the Government of Canada. It's bilingual and you will see the link in our chat. So that's it. That concludes our webinar and I hope you enjoyed it. We'll meet again this afternoon at 1.30 on the same link. So click again on the same link to enter this, that you use to enter this platform. At that point, we will discuss Canadians' awareness of water issue. Thank you so much and see you soon.
ですね。